hundred years ago was when uh, we found that uh, this was presented to us, the Goodhue Plan, which we feel is a tremendous plan. To come here in this little city and put this plan together and this concept together, this great bridge, the battlements, the tower, all that goes on with it, and the escarpment going up, we think is, is a jewel of the city and, as I mentioned, is a treasure to the, to the, nat to the national organizations. We, uh, go ahead. We went through some goals here. We felt it were important to start this thing out. We wanted to get as much done here as probably we could do. And we certainly go along with the concept that, that Dr. Jacobs has talked about of getting the cars out of the uh, Prado area, getting the people into the Prado area without the cars and carrying this on out. Uh, we think it's very important that some other things happen within this area. We feel it's critical that the traffic that is going through the park now, that 7,000 cars across the bridge, that that traffic not have to keep on going through the park, and particularly when the zoo expands and some of these other things go on. There's a better way of doing that. The Prado was designed as a little uh, kind of a European city with a plaza. That's how it was laid out and as it was thought. And like little European cities with a plaza, it has problems now. And it doesn't work for traffic and circulation, as you've seen here and we've seen here before. You might be interested, many cities in Europe now who have plazas now are converting those to underground garages below the plaza and then marking every stone or brick and putting it back in place so it doesn't look like it's ever been touched. So they face that problem and we face this problem too. We, uh, we want to make sure that it's balanced. We think there's a tremendous need in the, in the park to make sure that people going there, I'm not talking about those in Nikes and sweatsuits, I'm talking about those going there to visit some of the cultural things of our city. It's the cultural core of our city. And I want to make sure that they have that opportunity, they feel they don't have to have a work up a sweat to get there, that they can ac accomplish this sort of a thing. We, um, we feel that along with this, uh, the parking is critical to it, how it works, what happens to it. We believe that, uh, number one, that uh, we certainly uh, do not want to have paid parking required in the park. We want to have it as open as we can. We want to have the private tra transit without, within the park so the city doesn't have to be involved with burdening with that and can be done better. We believe that the park is a place for people. And uh, it is a place where it just, we just celebrate to go on to Tutu and they go through there. We also think getting ready to go to the great 100-year uh, centennial is an important part of that part, too. All right, go ahead. He's there. Pardon? He's there. Okay. The park now, as you, if you'll notice the park, it is a uh, great place, except the city on the top by the park, by the, by the zoo, is an old city. And like old cities, has bad circulation problems. The Sarah Park is basically served off a of park boulevard where you'll notice that all of the park, almost all the parking lots go off that more, more readily. As a matter of fact, we have about 1,500 cars plus the other parking, about almost 1,800, 1,900 cars parked in the south part of the park. And the north park and the old part of the park is there is very much lacking in this area of park. Okay. We want to bring up quickly the zoo, what they're going to do. The zoo's determined that the more parking they have, the more people come to the zoo. They're going to, they have this plan that's been done and approved all by the city, ready to go. The 4,200 cars are going to add to this area, 2,500 in the first phase. Now, those, you'll recognize that many people going to the zoo go through the park to get there from the east-west direction. And so it's very important that this be taken into consideration. This first shot here shows the plaza and it shows the going on down, what they're going down to the fountain in the park itself. The next slide would show the parking below and, and in and right going into the roads into the park and how it all affects it. So my point to this is we've got to consider the zoo as, and its parking needs and its traffic needs as part of the park uh, way of going. Go ahead. Under proposal A, that would be is commonly called the Jacobs Plan. There's a couple things I think we should point out. The first thing you do when you go through and, and do something like this is you're going to look up far and find a place to put the parking garage. The parking garage will set the tone and set a whole trigger of items that follow when, when you do this. When you put the parking garage, as they have here, on top of a parking area that's, that's set, parked 367 cars, Immediately, you should get a red light and say, whoa, we're going to have a yield problem here because we are already going to build a big garage over a place where we already have parking cars. And so that's going to be a problem. As a matter of fact, we proved that's about an $8 million problem right there. 
The other area that you look at here is where is this parking going to be located? You notice you have 1,500 below plus 785, or say 800 cars there, 2,300 cars. And up in the north, up in there in the old area, 33 handicap spaces. And that is really doesn't work. You just can't take those all, all those away from that area. This is this is the, the core. This is mentioned the cultural core of the park, of the park here. And so we feel that is a that is a real tough consideration. We might mention when we say that that the air, the the venue in the park that does the best, it draws the most people. Can you think what that is? It's the Reuben H. Fleet. The Reuben H. Fleet has the best parking in the park. It's got its own parking lot off Park Boulevard. The whole thing works for it. If you look at the papers about two months ago, you'll notice that there was a problem with the uh, Museum of Man, where they're running out of money, they have to shut the store, like cut off people and the whole thing, which is a tragedy, truly really a tragedy. And if you look at that up there, it's in a white zone. We call that the dead zone. If you can't park within about 250 or 300 feet of where you want to go, in a commercial venture, and these are these operate like a commercial venture, then you've got a problem, and you can't get leases for them, you can't sell them, and so on. So we think that there's got to be a better way than that. The other area that comes in is how do you get to this garage? And right now this has been shown, you come across the bridge and across that side, go around and put a new bridge in, that's a $4 million problem, then work through a uh, kind of a zigzag road that goes on into it, radius is way too small, for a collector and a whole bunch of little things going on in there. So that, that's, that's a problem we see it, and we think there's a better way of doing it. Okay, next slide. If you were to say, where do you want to put the parking? Where's the ideal place to put the parking in this situation? You would say you'd put it right below the, the Plaza de Panama, right there where it's right in the middle of all these venues, and you'd put it there, and you'd put some elevators up into those courtyards and in entry lobbies, and you could get people in 250, 300 feet of where they want to go. Protected, no sweat, you could get up to do that. You also have another thing that goes for you. you got a $2 million bonus when you do this. The Plaza de Panama is going to be built and refinished and resurfaced, the whole area, over 100,000 feet in this area. 18, 20 bucks a foot, that's $2 million, real quick. And so there's a bonus when you go in and put it in, in this place, which you don't have any other place in the park. The other area we has to have, though, you have to have the, the rim road, the north rim road, which is now goes up to the zoo and the hospital and the old globe and dies right here, dead end. We have to extend that so you can get circulation back there to service these things. You want to service a couple things, that parking, and you want to service the zoo also and keep all of this extra traffic out of the park. We could drop, we figure, our traffic people figure, we could drop two-thirds or more parking or traffic out of the, of the park by putting in a perimeter road on the north side there, which we think makes a lot of sense. Now, when you do these things, one of the things that comes across is, well, how do you service that? And there's two ways of doing that. One is what we've they've described as a left-hand turn rather than a right-hand turn. It's on grade. And the other way would be, and we can flip the next slide, the other way would be where you would uh, not have that and, and take the bridge and not make it, a, make it a pedestrian bridge. So the pedestrians would carry all the way out from the park, all the way across the way to the park on the other side, which would be a splendid thing and it would be a very clean thing. And the, other, and the other circulation would come up into the southern part of the park, which would be a lesser amount. And so you, you have these, these ways of doing it and how, how they fit. And then on B... We, we like uh, our, our opinion, and we think it would be great to just on the bridge to open it up to, but, but to put it, uh, the pedestrians only and to then uh, have the park, all the circulation on the perimeter of the park, on the perimeter roads of the park. It would be a magnificent thing. One thing there, on, uh, on this scheme, uh, the Lewis scheme, there's also a 54 uh, space parking lot behind the uh, art museum too, which just coincidentally is the same number of spaces that are in the Plaza de Panama today. So. Thanks. I want to go to the next slide and talk about numbers just for briefly. When you do a parking analysis, this is what you do up front when you do a project. You take a look at this and see what's going to happen. Under Proposal A, without going through the numbers, but this comes out of the EIR, we have a net yield of a build this big garage of 260-some cars. You build an 800-car garage, and you're going to get a yield of 260 cars out of it. We can tell you right now, without even going any further, without doing studies, you've got an $8 million problem sitting on your hands. 
Under Proposal B is what we're saying going underneath. You'll find that the yield there is 728 cars, same size garage, 500 cars more. We don't like the yield on that one even, but it's certainly far from the other one. If you go then and compare these two, and we do this, this is what we do on a normal project. We look through on a commercial project to see how it's going. Under A, you'll notice there on the left side, you've got the parking garage. 261 cars yield and a burden of 537. You're going to build that garage, garage of 798 cars, and get 261 yield out of that garage. And then you've got to pay for it. On the other side, that garage has been priced, I understand, at 20 million. 20 million four is our numbers that we, we understand. And then that's the 20 million dollar. Then you have to add the bridge to it, and you come over with about 24 million dollars to spark 261 cars. The commercial world would never do that. We, wouldn't even, we would right then stop even trying on that scheme. Then you have the other problem on the very far right, where you have then the bonds to pay for it, the 14 million that have been put aside for bonds, is our understanding and the buses to serve it, the more buses, and that's a, that's a burden about, a, in our opinion, close to five or five and a half million dollars a year debt to the city that could, could, would occur. If you then were to take it down and say, well, let's just do what the yield is. Let's go down and say, let's just build a car garage with 260 in, in the below grade, one level garage, and be equal, then you'd find out that that would be around a $10 million project or, or savings of $13 million. That gives you an extreme. That says that that's what your loss is because you, the burden on that garage. If you go the 800-car garage like we're recommending on the number one, then you get a yield of 750 there on cars, and the price is 17.2, and then you have savings of 7.4. Now you get the little, we get a uh, bypass road, we put that in to go over the bypass bridge would be on the right side. So it's a savings of about 7.4. The middle scheme with two levels of parking would be one you ought to really look hard at. That's 497 cars parked, Prado area 640 cars, savings about 10 million six. So my point is on this, when you do a project and look at it and you find a yield that's bad, you better place the flag real quick because you're going to have cost problems from then on.